Our next speaker is Dr. Jennifer Bricks. Dr. Bricks is a Kelowna-based naturopath specializing in digestive, hormonal, and brain health. Dr. Bricks is a frequent guest on radio and television shows, webinars, and in her spare time, she even volunteers in Ecuador and Mexico providing care to children and families in need. So she's here with us today to educate us on sleep, energy, and vitality. So Dr. Bricks, thank you so much for being here. Hi, Jonathan. Thank you for that intro and thank you for having me today. Fatigue is a complicated matter and it can mean different things to different people. Ask yourself, are you mentally fatigued? Do you have brain fog? Or are you physically tired and can't complete the same physical tasks like a workout or a hike or even things around the house like you used to? Or maybe it's even deeper than that. You think you sleep okay, but you never wake up feeling refreshed and your low energy never seems to pick up throughout the day. Or perhaps you do have insomnia and can't shut off your brain. If only you could get those seven to nine hours of recommended sleep, you know you'd feel amazing. Understanding where your lack of energy is coming from and assessing whether your sleep is actually restorative is what we're gonna to discuss today. To start off, let's talk about how to find balance. This includes balancing your work and social commitments and family duties, managing environmental stressors and dedicating time for yourself. The second thing is determining lifestyle factors that may be affecting your energy, such as physical activity, diet, stressors, medications, and having mind-body awareness. Third is the very important hormone link to poor sleep and energy, and by this, we're really talking about the thyroid and adrenal glands. Fourth is nutrition and nutrient deficiencies. And last, we'll discuss sleep hygiene and solutions for insomnia. Before anything else, you need to do a check-in on how balanced your life is because balance preserves energy. By balance, I mean having the right balance for you in work, social life, family, and self-commitment, such as creativity, health, personal growth, and what you do for fun. There are a few ways to do this, and one that I like is the life balance wheel. Now, the challenges we have faced this year have pushed us in ways we might not have ever imagined. Last year, my life looked a lot different in which I was traveling twice a month across the country, doing what I loved, educating those in the health food industry. Instead, in my 12th year of practice, 2020 became the year that I would end up Zooming, doing telemedicine and spending a ton of time on my computer. Grabbing technology by the horns and embracing it in all aspects of my life wasn't really something I had planned for, nor was I finding joy in it. Giving up a huge part of my life and replacing it with a screen brought with it a host of issues for me. Along with the obvious eye strain, I was not feeling fulfilled in my day-to-day -day routine. I began to recognize that many of my patients were feeling this way too, and in many cases, including my own, it came down to a lack of self-care. I needed to relearn how to balance work, social, and self-commitments. First, I wasn't engaging in any social events really, and even now I find myself less inclined to getting out there and doing what I used to with my friends and family. I wasn't doing self-enhancing activities like going to the local theater or yoga studio, or even the coffee shop where I love to decompress and people watch. So reassessing the wheel of life is something that should be done on a fairly regular basis to see how in line you are with your own personal goals for balance and life fulfillment. For example, maybe you're spending not enough time with your family, but far too much on health because you are worried about you and your family and their immune systems and what the future holds for your health situation. Remember that balance is very individual. You might need to reshape your definition of balance and know it is okay to put things down for a while, as long as you don't forget to come back for them later. What I realized is that in order to find balance, sometimes important things need to sit on the back burner for a while. You don't have to keep all your balls in the air at once, nor do you need to address all your values every single day. Always be kind and patient with yourself when accepting that balance is more a state of mind rather than a checklist. And be sure to be true to yourself and follow what your body and mind say you need right now. Here are some tips when starting out with rebalancing your life. Setting goals and reassessing your schedule, planning ahead, learning good time management, focusing on your priorities, and rearranging your habits. 
Healthy habits, like drinking more water, for example, can be stacked with other parts of your routine. For me, I had to place a glass of water next to my alarm clock so that when I wake up, I'm reminded to take that glass and drink it. For more detrimental habits, like excessive time spent on social media or online shopping, or focusing on other people's successes or failures, learn a distracting technique. So stand up and stretch for five minutes so you can get back on track with your day. Research from the Journal of Environmental and Public Health showed that contact with the earth and grounding yourself may be a simple, natural, and yet profoundly effective environmental strategy against chronic stress, nervous system dysfunction, inflammation, pain, poor sleep, and fatigue. Grounding yourself may involve spending time in nature, reflecting on your day, which can help you mentally ground, limit your electromagnetic field exposure by turning your phone off while you sleep, and finally incorporate gratitude into your daily routine. Instinctively, we feel a profound gratification when encountering nature. So whether walking along the beach, touching the bark of a tree, or picnicking at the park, a deeper connection is ignited within us. It is possible that you could also be depleting your energy without even knowing it. A short check-in on your lifestyle can help to determine if you are indeed adding insult to injury. So ask yourself, are you getting the right amount of physical activity? Physical movement is a very important facet to foundational health. In fact, research has shown that regular, moderate intensity exercise reduces the risk of heart disease, it helps the body manage blood sugar and insulin levels, improves mental health, lowers the risk of cognitive decline, strengthens bones and muscles, and can even encourage better sleep. But note, the keyword here is moderate. In the exercise world, moderate intensity activity is anything that increases your heart rate up to 50 to 60% higher than its rate when at rest. The Canadian Heart and Stroke Foundation recommends adults get at least 150 minutes of moderate intensity aerobic physical activity per week. So that's 30 minutes, five days a week. Light exercise will not provide as much benefit and excessively vigorous exercise can actually cause our body's stress hormone cortisol to do some pretty counterproductive things, such as encouraging more fatigue states. Second, ask yourself if you feel like you're getting adequate and optimal nutrition from your meal choices and supplements if you're taking them. We must feed the body foods high in nutrients like vitamins and minerals and phytonutrients, but also make sure that you're able to absorb these nutrients. So dialing in your gastrointestinal health is also a component of overall well-being and balance. For example, if you can't absorb the iron or the vitamin B12 you are taking in your food or in your supplements, your anemia making you feel tired every day will not improve. Third is to check in with stress levels. Whether emotional or physical stress or toxic stress, this is key to manage in order to have the body and mind run like a well-oiled machine. Stop smoking, reduce alcoholic beverages to one daily or eliminate altogether, and look into ways to assess your toxic overload, like urine testing for common household toxins and heavy metals. Fourth is mind-body awareness. The dissociation of the mind and body can also encourage deleterious effects. So not reflecting on how you feel or how much time you are spending on your health or on components that invigorate you and spending too much on things that drain you will only dig a deeper hole for you to have to climb out of. In addition to exogenous impacts, we also have to look within our bodies to rule out other conditions that could impact our sleep and energy levels. Two areas to assess are thyroid and adrenal health. Your adrenal glands are what respond to stressors in your life along with your brain and other organs, of course. Often called our stress glands, these hat-shaped glands sit above the kidneys and produce a variety of hormones that are critical to a healthy life. When we simplify this, we see that they secrete two major chemicals involved in the stress response, cortisol and adrenaline. When under acute stress, the first thing to rise is our adrenaline. The feelings people get when this occurs is due to the fight or flight response, which includes sensations of feeling on edge, rapid heart rate, sweating, and tension or trembling. Following this, the adrenals help the body adapt to stress by releasing cortisol. Cortisol is actually anti-inflammatory in nature and rises to counter the effects of the adrenaline rush you just had. 
It then should come down to normal, allowing the body to recuperate. But with multiple stressors or constant stress, our adrenaline can spike several times per day, giving our bodies little chance to allow cortisol to return back to baseline. What we see is an overall increase in our cortisol production throughout the day, and constant stress therefore can lead to adrenal fatigue and exhaustion. Living in an elevated cortisol state can impact your health in many different ways. It can fuel the desire for fatty foods and carbohydrates. It depletes serotonin and increases those cravings as well as anxiety. It increases blood sugar and insulin, lowers testosterone causing muscle loss, decreases progesterone, interferes with thyroid function, increases belly fat deposition, and also inhibits melatonin production impacting your sleep. In fact, research shows that after only one night of sleep restricted to four hours, cortisol levels rise 37% the following day. This is especially problematic for shift workers or students not getting enough sleep on a regular basis. Further to this, when cortisol is high at night, it suppresses melatonin, which can exacerbate poor sleep. But it's also important to know that cortisol is necessary to allow for REM sleep. So you do need some, but not too much at night to allow for proper healing, detoxification, and repair. Having too high or too low cortisol at night can affect restorative sleep, causing you to feel unrefreshed the next day. Low cortisol occurs after long periods of stress, when the adrenals have a harder time secreting cortisol. This is called adrenal fatigue, and there are many symptoms that can indicate your adrenals are not optimally responding to stress. These may include aches and pains, further anxiety, irritability, and depression, sleep disturbances and fatigue, worsening in hormone imbalances, cold hands and feet, dizziness, headaches, cravings for salt, sugar, and stimulants like coffee, and continued weight gain, especially around the waist. The question many of my patients then ask me is if someone can restore their adrenal glands, and the answer is yes. Start with ensuring you're eating fresh, wholesome food, getting proper sleep, doing simple exercise, slowing down, and supporting the adrenals with dietary and herbal supplements. Try an adrenal stress questionnaire to see where you rate in the adrenal stress spectrum. So are you still in fight or flight, having high cortisol, or are you now in the adrenal fatigue state with low cortisol? Now, what if you don't know whether your cortisol is too high or too low? Certain tests can help determine this, but if you don't have access to this, adaptogens can be very effective to nourish and strengthen the adrenal glands and help the body cope with stress naturally. A well-known adaptogen is ashwagandha and an extract of the ashwagandha root will be more effective in supporting the adrenal glands, bringing your energy up more quickly. The second important gland involved in energy and sleep is the thyroid gland. This gland is highly impacted by stress and cortisol, so adrenal fatigue almost always accompanies low thyroid and vice versa. Low thyroid has become a bit of an epidemic in Canada. In fact, recent studies indicate that one in 10 Canadians suffer from a thyroid condition, and of those, as many as 50% are undiagnosed. Thyroid hormones are the gas pedal for the body and are critical to energy, weight management, and a healthy metabolism. Symptoms of low thyroid include low energy, weight gain, cold intolerance, hair loss, dry skin, constipation, depression, and infertility. You may also have slower reflexes and be losing the outer third of your eyebrows if your thyroid function is sluggish. It is also important to be aware that when testing for thyroid function, hormones like free T3 and free T4, which are not part of a routine screen, are the thyroid hormones themselves, while TSH, or thyroid stimulating hormone, is a brain hormone and more of a surrogate marker for thyroid function. Typically, the only hormone tested in a blood panel is TSH. While this stimulates the thyroid gland to make T4 hormone, T3 is the more active hormone which is most responsible for managing metabolism. There is no guarantee that a normal TSH level will indicate that your thyroid hormones themselves are in the normal range. Problems with converting T4 to T3 are also common and can be caused by inflammation and high cortisol. 
So getting a comprehensive thyroid panel is the first step to determine the overall health of this very important gland. If all you have is TSH as a guide, you need to consider what the optimal level is. Even though most labs have a normal range of 0.45 to 4.5, the desirable range is actually between one and three and a half, and optimal is one to 1.5. So I encourage you to see whether you are in the optimal zone, not just normal, which can have dramatic impacts on both your energy levels and your sleep. Important things to consider to support your thyroid gland are including foods rich in iodine in your diet, so things like kelp, nori, and other sea vegetables, Managing stress, so taking time to relax. Avoiding genetically modified soy, instead choosing fermented non-GMO soy in moderation. And eating raw goitrogens in moderation as well, or if cooked, eat as much as you like. Goitrogenic foods include broccoli, kale, cabbage, cauliflower, and turnips, and can affect your thyroid function. Reducing levels of gluten in your diet are also important, as antibodies against gluten can cross-react and attack the thyroid gland, contributing to an autoimmune thyroid condition. Always support the adrenals, as we have discussed, and avoid toxins such as fluoride and bromine, which can displace iodine in the thyroid gland. There are also several nutrient deficiencies that can zap energy and interfere with sleep. Nutrients needed for energy come ideally from healthy nutrition. Protein is a macronutrient we often do not get enough of, and often this worsens as we get older. For most of us, consuming half a gram of protein for every pound of body weight per day is the starting point, and many of us need more on a daily basis. Protein with every meal helps support sleep cycles later in the day by keeping blood sugar more balanced. If you get a hunger pang after dinner, make sure it is rich in protein and fiber to prevent glucose spikes and dips, which can interfere with your sleep. Specific amino acids from protein, like tryptophan, a precursor for serotonin, and glycine can also contribute to healthy sleep. Essential fatty acids, such as omega-3 fatty acids found in fish, flax, and chia, were shown in a study in the Journal of Clinical Sleep Medicine to improve sleep in participants when in combination with vitamin D. Researchers think it's because of the effect of those nutrients on regulating serotonin. All other vitamins and minerals are involved in producing energy in our cells, but insufficiencies in iron and iodine for its role in thyroid health, as well as the B vitamins, especially vitamin B12 and folate and zinc, are more likely to contribute to low energy. Low magnesium can contribute to problems with falling and staying asleep. Medications can interrupt sleep and impact energy levels throughout the day. And speaking to your primary health provider is important to find the best solution for you. Medications may interfere with your body's ability to absorb certain nutrients, or they may interfere with natural processes needed to activate these nutrients. Others may cause deficiencies of several nutrients at a time. For example, diuretics can deplete magnesium, potassium, and calcium. Medications may also interfere with sleep cycles, depriving you of the amount and quality of your sleep. Short-term medication use, so less than once a month, will generally not lead to nutrient deficiencies, but long-term use may. Reevaluating your medications with your healthcare provider may mean you could change or reduce your dosages and ultimately help support sustained energy throughout the day. To help prevent these side effects, a multivitamin and mineral providing all the essentials may be effective at supporting both energy and sleep, especially if you have a diet insufficient in these. Multis help prevent deficiencies induced by medication, stress, poor diet, or toxin exposure. And multivitamin and minerals in combination with protein, such as an all-in-one or a meal replacement, can provide a simple, easy, on-the-go solution. Both your body and brain require rest in order to function properly. Judgment, memory, and reaction time can all be impaired when someone does not have enough sleep. This is due to the fact that sleep deprivation can kill brain cells. The World Association of Sleep Medicine states that sleep problems, including insomnia, sleep apnea, restless leg syndrome, and sleep deprivation in general, affects up to 45% of the world's population. In Canada, 60% of adults report they feel tired most of the time and are getting on average 6.9 hours of sleep a night. In the past two decades, we have increased our work and commuting time by roughly 160 hours. 
and typically it is sleep that we're cutting into. Chronic sleep deprivation can contribute to obesity, diabetes, high blood pressure, heart attack and stroke, depression, decreased immunity, and inflammatory and other medical conditions. We've already discussed some causes of sleep deprivation, but to review, sleep can be dramatically impacted by stress and anxiety, shift work, gut imbalances, thyroid disorders, adrenal fatigue, restless leg syndrome, pain, and other hormone imbalances. So when treating insomnia, we first must do no harm, but often the drug of choice is a sedative or hypnotic drug. Know that these can be highly addictive and are poor candidates for long-term use and come with a long list of side effects, like dizziness and drowsiness and impaired coordination, depression, loss of libido and weight gain, and memory and cognitive impairment. They can also be dangerous and you should not drive while on these medications and if taken with alcohol, the result can be fatal. In fact, a 2010 study concluded that sleeping pills were linked to an increased risk of death in Canadian adults. So to combat sleep problems, first decide if you have an issue with falling asleep or staying asleep. Or if you feel you sleep well, but are unrefreshed when you wake up, you may have adrenal fatigue. To target the problem, you want to implement both proper sleep hygiene and natural health supplements. Good sleep hygiene means establishing bedtime routines. So take a bath, meditate, or listen to relaxation music or journal. Select a small, high-protein bedtime snack if you are hungry, such as nut butters, Greek yogurt, chicken, eggs, or a protein shake. Create a relaxed sleep environment, so quiet, cool bedroom, and keep disruptive animals out. Eliminate inhibitors of sleep, such as caffeine and other stimulants, and do know that over 300 prescription drugs can impair your sleep. Turn off your screens and any lights, use blackout blinds and turn off any other disruptive electronics in your bedroom. And finally, utilize natural sleep aids which can help calm or sedate, stabilize your blood sugar levels, and support your adrenal glands as we, ha as we have already discussed. As I mentioned earlier, supplement solutions depend on what kind of sleep concern you have. Melatonin is one option. It is a hormone involved in sleep onset and quality that will help sedate you. Vitamin B12 and the amino acid tryptophan support the production of melatonin in the brain. Calming neurotransmitter support, such as L-theanine and GABA, can calm the body and the mind. And 5-HTP, the precursor for serotonin, is involved in melatonin production and the maintenance of good quality restorative sleep. Herbal support can help you attain a better restorative sleep as well, and these may include kava kava, which is also a muscle relaxant, lemon balm, which is a gentle calming herb, and valerian, which contains compounds that may promote calmness by reducing GABA breakdown. Finally, a sleep assessment tool, such as this one from the Alberta Medical Association, can help to determine the degree of insomnia you have, how it may be affecting your body, and insights into what solutions may work for you. Grading of a three, four, or five on any question indicates that you likely suffer from insomnia. And if on two or more questions with significant daytime impacts, you will likely benefit from further evaluation. High scores on certain questions give further insight, such as whether a psychiatric disorder may exist like depression and anxiety, if a circadian rhythm disorder occurs, suggesting the need for melatonin, and if you are experiencing non-restorative sleep or whether sleep apnea should be evaluated. Okay, to summarize how to sleep more soundly and spruce up your day with more energy, let's go over what we discussed. Number one, start with finding balance in your life. Find balance that is right for you most of the time and practice grounding yourself, connecting with nature, limiting EMF exposure, and having a grateful outlook. Two, check in with your lifestyle. Are you eating well, exercising in moderation, reducing stressors in your life, and practicing mind-body awareness? Are you also taking the right medications for you? Three, restore your adrenal and thyroid glands. Questionnaires and blood tests can provide insight into their health, while herbal adaptogens can support fluctuating cortisol in the meantime. Four, identify nutrient deficiencies and either specifically take those that you need or support them all with a multivitamin mineral supplement. 
Add in protein and essential fatty acids if you're lacking these in your diet. And five, whether you have a problem staying asleep, falling asleep, or getting restorative sleep, sleep hygiene, natural supplements, and identifying further concerns using sleep questionnaires is an integrative approach to help you sleep better and feel more energy. To finish, here's a fun tip. If you're feeling tired, go ahead and yawn. Sleep deprivation raises brain temperature, and yawning has been shown to cool down the brain. And who doesn't love a cool cranium?